My people, Stardew Valley's 1.5 update allows you to combine two rings into one, which effectively lets you have the bonuses of up to four rings at once. So that raises the question, what are the four best rings in Stardew Valley? In this video, we're gonna talk about the effects of each of the meaningful rings, combinations of two that go well together, and then finally, the best combinations of four depending on your play style. If you guys find this video helpful, leaving a like helps it do a lot better on YouTube, or I stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez. To start off, we'll talk about the new rings from the 1.5 update. The Hot Java Ring gives you a 25% chance to receive a coffee drop from any monster that you kill and a 7.5% chance to receive a triple shot espresso. Depending on how often you frequent the mines, just having one of these rings could be enough to produce all of the coffee you could ever need. As someone who goes into the Skull Cavern and mines a decent bit, this ring has been enough to provide me with enough coffee to just be boosted permanently everywhere I go. When you wear the Thorns Ring, enemies will take just as much damage as they deal to you. When you're wearing the Phoenix Ring and you accidentally let your health reach zero, your health will actually return all the way up to the halfway point again, effectively saving you from a death. This effect only works once per day even if you have multiple phoenix rings and it can be a literal lifesaver. The soul sapper ring gives you an additional four energy every time you kill a monster, and the immunity band will give you an additional four immunity. The glowstone ring combines the glow ring and the magnetism ring, so not quite as good as the iridium band that we'll go over later, but it is new to 1.5 so I figured I'd touch on it. The protection ring will give you an additional 0.4 seconds of invincibility after you take damage, which is up from its original 1.25 seconds. Personally, I don't think this is really a great buff, but it could be very nice to have if you're trying to make your way through a group of enemies. And finally, the piece de resistance, the lucky ring, will give you an additional plus one luck at all times when you wear it. Unfortunately, the lucky ring is really difficult to come by as it is a special item in the Skull Cavern or you can find it rarely while panning. Those are all of the new rings from 1.5, but now I wanna go over some of the best rings that have been in the game since before the update. The Iridium Band is effectively the best ring in the game as it's three for the price of one. It combines the effects of the Glow Ring, the Magnet Ring, and the Ruby Ring. Although it's not 100% necessary to have, I think it's way too good to not at least be tempted to use. If you kill a monster while wearing the Burglar's Ring and you don't receive a drop from that monster, it will actually roll the drop table again, giving you a second chance to get an item. This is really good for when you're looking for a particular item or when you're trying to gather a lot of a resource, like when you're killing the Dust Sprites for coal. The effect of this ring does not stack, so there is no added benefit to wearing more than one Burglar's Ring. I think this is by far one of the best items in the game because it will nearly double the rate at which you get items that you're hunting for. The Napalm Ring makes monsters explode when they are defeated. This can be very convenient because as you're kind of just doing your own thing while mining, you end up taking out a lot of rocks along the way. I've used this ring for a while now and there's been plenty of times where I've gone to just kill a monster I was going to kill anyway and accidentally found a ladder down to the next level. The Savage Ring gives you a plus two speed boost for three seconds every time you kill an enemy. This effect does stack with the speed boost that you would get from drinking a coffee or eating something like a spicy eel, so it's possible to have up to a plus four speed boost at once. And the Slime Charmer Ring prevents slimes from doing damage to you or slowing you down while you wear it. This is originally something I went out of my way for for our Slime Hut but I found that it's actually really helpful for things like the Skull Cavern. I'll also quickly give an overview of all the different gem rings and their effects. The Amethyst Ring gives a knockback of plus 10%, the Aquamarine Ring gives a critical strike chance of plus 10%, the Emerald Ring gives a weapon speed of plus 10%, the Jade Ring gives a critical strike power of plus 10%, and the Ruby Ring gives a plus 10% damage effect. The Topaz Ring also gives a plus 10% weapon precision stat, which I looked up actually does literally nothing as there are no weapons in the game that even have a chance to miss right now. And also here's some other miscellaneous rings that have been in the game for a while that I also think are useful. The Crab Shell Ring will give you plus 5 defense when you wear it, and the Ring of Yoba will occasionally give you 5 seconds of invincibility after you've been damaged. The Sturdy Ring cuts the duration of negative status effects in half, like when the slimes slow you down, and the Vampire Ring will give you plus 2 health every time you kill a monster. And finally, the Warrior Ring will occasionally give you a 5 second boost of plus 10 attack. Next we'll talk about a couple of rings that I think go really well together, and you really can't go wrong combining these in the Forge. The Iridium Band and the Lucky Ring is good for literally everything. You get luck, extra attack damage, you glow, and you have magnetism. Out of every ring that I've listed, these are the only two that are useful while out of combat, and if you could have two of them, I think that would be incredibly powerful. The Burglar's Ring and the Slime Charmer Ring go really well together, especially if you're the kind of person that likes to go get loot yourself rather than buy it from one of the stores. You likely aren't risking any death in the regular mines, but slimes can still annoyingly slow you down, so having the Slime Charmer Ring can save you a lot of time. And also because the Burglar's Ring effectively gives you twice as much chance to get loot, you will find yourself being a lot more efficient on your trips. If you're in the mines a little bit less often than someone like myself, then the Burglar's Ring and the Hot Java Ring could be really good to combine. You will literally never need to make coffee again regardless of how often you visit the mines because you're your chances of finding coffee in the wild are so high. I think it's generally a really end game thing to have a permanent speed boost wherever you go by having enough coffees to drink, 
and so this is a really easy way to take your farm to the next level. The Vampire Ring and the Soul Sapper Ring work really well together, especially when you need to just run into the mines quickly but don't want to have to worry about bringing any food. The Vampire Ring will help you offset any damage that you take, and the Soul Sapper Ring will help you offset any energy that you expend. The Crab Shell Ring and the Phoenix Ring are very helpful, especially if you're playing on a multiplayer map. When you play on single player, you can open up your menu or you can eat food and that will slow down all the enemies from taking damage, but when you're playing on multiplayer and the enemies don't stop, it can be really easy to accidentally die. When you're playing in single player and you die, you're just going to restart the day, but if you're playing in multiplayer, it can be a little bit more tough to convince people to redo all their progress. Because of the Crab Shell Ring's plus 5 defense bonus, you will take 5 less damage every time you take a hit, and the Phoenix Ring makes it a lot harder to accidentally die. The Slime Charmer Ring and the Napalm Ring work really well together because it kind of turns those purple slimes from the Skull Cavern from an annoying enemy into a cluster bomb. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the best combinations of four rings to use. Now when I started making this video, I thought that there would just be one cut and dry answer, but I realized people play this game in a lot of different ways, so I've come up with a couple of different options for you that can fit either the situation or your playstyle. The best combination of four for day-to-day -day adventuring, I would say, is using the Iridium Ring and the Luck Ring combined, and then you use the Burglar Ring and the Hot Java Ring. As we talked about before, the Iridium and the Luck Ring just brings a lot to the table, and the Burglar and the Hot Java Ring will help stock you up on coffee forever. You might want to throw a Slime Charmer Ring into the mix if you have a Slime Hutch, or if you're in the lower level of the mines pretty frequently. If you can manage to get your hands on two Luck Rings, then you could also use that in place of the Hot Java. If you're trying to gather a specific monster drop like coal from the dust sprites, I would recommend using an Iridium and a Luck Ring and a Burglar and a Luck Ring. If you only have one Luck Ring, then you could substitute in another Iridium Band, or if you don't have any Luck Rings, then you could consider using a Slime Charmer Ring. If you're looking to gather a mineable resource like iron or gold, then I would recommend using the Lucky and the Napalm Ring and the Lucky and the Slime Charmer Ring. Since you don't need any bonuses for killing monsters, since you're just trying to mine some stuff, this layout prioritizes your ability to break a lot of rocks. You could also throw a burglar ring in there for the chance to receive drops from the monsters that you do end up killing, or you could replace one or both lucky rings with iridium bands for light and magnetism. If you're the kind of person that doesn't care about precision and just likes bombing the crap out of the skull cavern, then I would recommend using two luck and crab shell rings. The extra luck will help you with your chances of finding iridium, and the crab shell will reduce a lot of the damage that you take from bombs. You could also replace any of these rings with a phoenix ring, a slime charmer, or depending on what you're going for, a burglar ring. Ring. Wearing two crab shell rings will actually reduce the damage that you take from cherry bombs and regular bombs all the way down to one, and it will reduce the damage you take from the mega bomb to between five and eight. If you want to prioritize getting the absolute maximum damage available, then you're going to want two iridium band and ruby rings. Prior to the 1.5 update, a lot of people actually already ran two iridium bands since it's such a good ring, and adding rubies on top of this will only add more damage. Technically using the setup of an iridium band and a warrior ring, and an iridium band and a ruby would result in the greatest damage, but only immediately after killing an enemy. And just for fun, if you want to absolutely light up the night sky, you can use two iridium bands and glowstone rings. You could technically use the glowstone ring or the glow ring as they they both emit the same amount of light, but your light effects stack so you will have an incredibly well lit area of radius 10. I hope this video was helpful to you, if it was, leaving a like helps me out a ton on YouTube, or leave a comment down below if you have a different combination of four that you like to rock. Remember I do stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassableZ and I would love to have all of you guys over there, but that's all I've got for this video, peace.